Hey guys, in this video I'm going to criticize Rebecca Watson for the speech she gave in the Atheist Convention in Dublin. Now just as a disclaimer, I'm not the least bit sexist. In fact, I believe in complete equality between sexes, but I am afraid that Rebecca does not hold the same opinion as I do about what equality actually means. No, um, specifically, I, I, I took issue with something that was said by um, the esteemed Paula Kirby, whose work I really enjoy. But she made a comment that she felt that there was no problem with sexism in the atheist community because she's never experienced any sexism in the atheist community. Neither have you. Um, in the skeptical movement, we refer to that as an argument from ignorance. You don't even know the meaning of the word sexism, so who exactly is making the argument from ignorance here? Um, she also later said that she didn't think that there was some great conspiracy to keep women out of the atheist community. Well, I don't think anyone thinks that. I think that's a bit of a, a, a straw person, if you will. <laughs> Rebecca, by making up your own definitions for the word sexism, you're the one who's building a straw man here. What she's doing is referring to the real meaning of the word sexism, which is either believing that there are biologically given gender roles or holding the opinion of unequality between sexes. So that if there was a dominant male um, elite in the atheist community trying to keep females out of it, that would be sexist. You call sexist anything that you don't like or disagree with. Uh, I, I think that unless you want to consider the, the patriarchy in general as a conspiracy, which I don't, I don't think that there's um, any club that's getting together, uh, how can we get less women involved? No, that's, that's not happening. But there is an issue with sexism. Look who's talking about straw men. And I thought that because the topic of, of this panel is communicating atheism, I thought that maybe I could offer my perspective as someone who communicates atheism while being a woman. What the fuck does communicating atheism have to do with your gender? Don't you think it's a little bit sexist to think that there's a fundamental difference between women and men when it comes to communicating atheism? To give you just a quick idea, in the first three months of this year, state legislatures in the U.S. passed 916, or not passed, sorry, introduced 916 bills that restricted reproductive rights. Now let's see if the next issue she brings up has anything to do with the restriction of women's rights in particular, or is it rather the restriction of the reproductive rights of both sexes? Um, amongst those that passed were, were some really horrific things like um, abstinence-only education must be taught in one of the states, I believe it's South Carolina, um, unless the school petitions the government to teach something called Abstinence Plus, which is a way for religious conservatives to get abstinence-only education into the schools, while throwing in something about condoms at the end. Abstinence-only classes are equally detrimental to both boys and girls, so this is not really a women's right issue. Um, also some very serious restrictions on abortion um, and also on, on general access to contraception. Um, they're allowing pharmacists, for instance, to not give contraception to women who ask, ask them for it, which, um, and, and you know, they're protecting the pharmacist's jobs, um, so saying that they're allowed to, to take a religious exemption. I don't know if this is a intentional lie or distorting the facts on purpose, but you refer to the rights of pharmacists to refuse to sell contraception to women specifically, while in reality they will have the right to refuse to sell contraception to either sex. While on the topic of feminism and abortion, I'd like to state my opinion, which I'm afraid that not many people would agree with. As it stands right now, in couples that have unplanned pregnancies, the woman is the only one that has a say in the matter whether she wants to go ahead and give birth to that child or not. Now, while I think that you cannot force a woman to get an abortion, I think it is problematic that a woman can have the right to go ahead and give birth to her child and by that force the father to need to take care of it financially and otherwise. 
while the father had no say in the matter whether or not he wanted a child in the first place. Now, since you can't really force women to get abortions, which is um, obvious, I think there should be a protection of a father who is not interested in raising a child by either concealing his identity or relieving him from the need to take care of the child financially or otherwise. If a father decides he is not interested in being a part of the child's life, he has every right to do so since the child was not planned by both of them. Now, women can go ahead and choose to have the baby, and the father is pretty much screwed. The reason why this has to do with feminism is because feminism is basically the idea that there should be a complete equality between sexes. But here is a perfect example of something that most feminists will not fight for to um, encourage equality between the rights of men and women. Here women are overprivileged in their rights while men have no say in the matter and particularly no rights at all. So as long as a, a feminist doesn't actually fight for the rights of men such as these, I don't think she has the right to call herself a feminist rather a female supremacist because if you really are fighting for equality you should fight for equality in all rights um, so I, I spoke briefly about that on on the podcast and I, I encourage people in the audience who are concerned about separation of church and state when it comes to things like parent schools and, and creationism I encourage them to learn more about what's happening to women and to get involved and to help fight the religious right this is just plain bullshit Refusal to sell contraceptives is a problem for both sexes, and so is abortion. I mean, if abortion would be illegal, it would be a problem for both parents because the father is equally responsible for taking care of the child. So then the emails started coming in. The, the first email was uh, addressed to the female on the podcast. <laughs> Although I can't be completely certain, I'm pretty sure that he used the term female sarcastically just to show that he has a strong opposition to your opinions just like so many others do. My name is at the top of the show. Everybody calls me by that name. It's Rebecca. Uh, it's on the website. But it was addressed to the female and um, he was wondering why I was encouraging people to kill babies. Uh, he was an atheist. So what you're saying is, atheists are not allowed to disagree with you. Well, let me tell you something. The only opinion that all atheists have in common is that there is probably no God. An atheist can hold any stance he wishes when it comes to abortion or any other matter that has nothing to do with religion specifically. Um, an another, another email I got uh, was addressed not to me, but to the men of the podcast. Uh, it was basically, dear guys, won't one of you do something about that Rebecca? <laughs> you know that when there's a group of men and women, you can still refer to them as guys. And he said, do something about that Rebecca, not do something about that bitch. This isn't the first time this, that I get those emails all the time. They're not addressed to me, they're addressed to the men, asking them to shut up that girl. <laughs> So I wish I could say that those emails were rare, but they're not. I get a couple of them a month, usually uh, more if I'm talking about women's issues. Um, they, um, they're, they're extraordinary, some, they range in, in sexism. <laughs> From extraordinarily sexist to this is probably kind of sexist. Many people before me have proven that you would say that is probably kind of sexist about pretty much anything you dislike. Um, and, and it's quite disheartening to get these emails from people who actually agree with me on 98% of everything else that's important, um, but not on this. You just don't know how to deal with people disagreeing with you. Nobody is obligated to agree with you on every matter simply because they're an atheist. Atheists tend to call everybody out on their bullshit, not only theists. And when you hold such retarded opinions such as yours regarding sexism, you should be expected to be called out on your bullshit. Then there are the emails from the people who seem to agree with me 100% of the time. There are, I, I get fan mail, and a certain percentage of that fan mail is um, 
graphically sexual. Um, <laughs> and it's, you're laughing, I hope, out of a little bit of discomfort. <laughs> I think they're laughing because they have no idea why you're making such a big deal out of this. Most people can deal with these things because they're not as sexually insecure as you are. And if you're not uncomfortable, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Uh, because some of these emails do describe in graphic detail what these men would like to do to me sexually. These are from the people who agree with me and they think they're complimenting me by, by sending me these emails, these uh, tweets, um, YouTube messages, things like that. So these are from atheists, uh, and they don't necessarily understand that they're being horribly misogynistic, but they are. Here's where your misconception about sexism comes into play. Sexual advances towards you aren't sexist. Sexism is the belief that there is an inequality between sexes, that there's a difference in the gender roles. What they're doing is actually the opposite of sexism. They're trying to be completely equal and thinking that you would have the capacity to either accept or refuse their sexual advances. They're giving you every right to, de to decide for yourself whether or not you want to accept their sexual advances. I don't find anything wrong with that. You can just dismiss it if you don't like it, you can ignore them, and so on. But labeling it as sexist is just a way to protect yourself in your little bubble from everything that you don't like. You label it as sexist, and since you're a feminist, you expect other people to take arms and stand against these things just because you personally don't like them. Because misogyny isn't something that's just relegated to religion. Um, religion can certainly bring it out and it can strengthen it, but it's a cultural problem, and even atheists, even rational people, haven't necessarily rationally looked at their own ideas of, of gender and equality and sex. You should be listening to your own advice. Listen to what you said in the last sentence. You're the one who should reconsider your opinions about gender equality and sex, because your opinions are pretty retarded when it comes to either of these three. So that's one of the things I like to do on Skeptic. That's one of the things that Skeptic as a website stands for, is it's a place where we combine uh, skepticism and atheism and secularism and humanism and feminism. And through that, we hope to sort of let people know about what their privileges are and how they can help be more welcoming to women, how they can get rid of the biases they hold that they might not even realize they hold. You're inventing biases in your own head. Being able to approach a woman and hit on her is one of the positive aspects of living in a secular society. As long as it is not bordering with sexual harassment, it's fine. There is no reason to have anything holding you back from hitting on girls. How otherwise would a couple get together? At some point, somebody has to hit on the other. Now. What you're saying is that it's wrong for guys to hit on girls, and that makes you fucked up. Now, the way it should really work is that both sexes should be able to hit on each other equally. That is what you should be fighting for. Instead of fighting to not be able to hit on, on women whatsoever. And when we acknowledge that, we can help build a better support basis for them so that when they start getting these terrible emails, you know, when I was giving them, I was alone, and I would cry a lot about it. It's pretty cool how, with your appeal to emotion, you're trying to stay away from female stereotypes. Until the other guys on the podcast started speaking up and saying, you know, these emails are terrible. Did you notice how terrible these emails are? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I, I, I just want to encourage you all to support one another and to support the women in your lives and to, uh, to know that, that it is a problem and to maybe even watch your own language and your own behavior to, to try to root out any, any, any biases that might be lurking within you.